the Chrysler Turbine Car stands as one of the most ambitious and futuristic projects ever attempted by an American automaker. Developed in the early 1960s, it represented Chrysler's bold vision of replacing the traditional piston engine with a gas turbine, a technology borrowed from the aerospace world. The turbine car promised smoother operation, fewer moving parts, and the ability to run on virtually any combustible fuel. Though ultimately it never reached mass production, its story remains a testament to innovation, engineering daring, and the spirit of the jet age. After World War II, the jet engine had revolutionised aviation, and engineers began to wonder if similar technology could be adapted for cars. A gas turbine engine operates on a fundamentally different principle than an internal combustion engine. Instead of pistons moving up and down, a turbine spins continuously, driven by expanding hot gases. In theory, turbine engines had several major advantages. Fewer parts, less maintenance, lighter weight relative to power, instant starting in any weather, and the ability to run on a wide variety of fuels – diesel, kerosene, jet fuel, even alcohol or vegetable oil. Chrysler engineers first began experimenting with turbine technology in the 1950s. Early prototypes showed promise, but practical challenges like high exhaust temperatures, poor fuel economy at low speeds, and the need for exotic materials limited progress. Still, Chrysler believed turbine cars could represent the future of motoring, especially at a time when America was infatuated with space-age innovation. By 1963, after years of development, Chrysler unveiled its masterpiece, the Chrysler Turbine Car. Designed by Elwood Engel, who had previously worked at Ford, the turbine car featured a sleek, futuristic body that looked perfectly suited to the era of the Apollo program and atomic optimism. It was a two-door hardtop coupe painted in a signature colour called Turbine Bronze, with unique turbine-inspired styling elements like a spinning turbine blade motif in the grille and taillights. Under the hood, or rather behind the grille, was Chrysler's A831 turbine engine. It produced about 130 horsepower and a remarkable 425 blower-feet of torque, available almost instantly. The car could accelerate from 0 to 60 mAh in about 12 seconds, respectable for the time. Its engine, with only about 60 moving parts, compared to several hundred in a piston engine, was incredibly simple mechanically, promising longer life and lower maintenance. A key selling point was its flexibility. The turbine could burn a wide range of fuels, from regular gasoline to kerosene, diesel, or even perfume, tequila, or peanut oil. During testing, some drivers famously ran the turbine on everything from heating oil to Chanel No. 5 perfume, although the latter wasn't very cost-effective. Chrysler wanted to gather real-world feedback, so they launched a unique consumer testing program. 55 turbine cars were hand-built by Gear of Italy and then shipped to the United States. Chrysler selected 203 ordinary American drivers across 130 cities to drive the cars for three months each, free of charge. This was one of the first large-scale consumer testing programs in automotive history. The public was fascinated. Everywhere the turbine cars went, they drew crowds. The car's eerie, jet-like whine, its smooth power delivery and its futuristic looks made it seem like something out of science fiction. Drivers praised the easy operation and instant starts even in cold weather. However, complaints included sluggish fuel economy, about 13 to 16 miles per gallon, and a noticeable lag between pressing the accelerator and the engine spooling up. Additionally, the high temperature of the exhaust gases posed concerns for city driving. Cost. Turbine engines were expensive to produce, requiring high-temperature alloys that were not yet affordable for mass-market vehicles. Fuel economy and emissions. Though turbine engines could run on many fuels, their efficiency at low speeds was poor compared to conventional engines. Emissions also became a growing regulatory concern in the 1960s. Maintenance challenges. Although mechanically simpler, Turbines required precise and costly maintenance practices unfamiliar to most dealerships, government regulations and market changes. 
The early 1970s brought stricter emissions laws and a shift in consumer preferences toward economy cars, making it harder to justify investing in an experimental technology. Chrysler's financial troubles. Facing financial difficulties, Chrysler could not afford to gamble on an expensive new drivetrain without guaranteed profitability. Ultimately, most of the turbine cars were destroyed, a standard practice for experimental vehicles to avoid liability and import taxes. Only nine survived, and today they are among the rarest and most valuable American cars, displayed in museums like the Henry Ford Museum and owned by private collectors like Jay Leno. Even though the Chrysler turbine car never made it to mass production, its impact is undeniable. It demonstrated Chrysler's willingness to innovate and pushed the boundaries of automotive engineering. Lessons learned from turbine research influenced future advances in materials science, thermodynamics and alternative fuel technologies. The turbine car remains a beloved symbol of a time when anything seemed possible. A car that brought the jet age to the open road.